In the Plains country of Wyoming Territory, I met a homesteading family. This is an account of how they lived and nearly died. Frontier Gentlemen. Here with an Englishman's account of life and death in the West. As a reporter for the London Times, he writes his colorful and unusual stories. But as a man with a gun, he lives and becomes a part of the violent years in the new territories. Now starring John Daner, this is the story of J.B. Kendall, Frontier Gentleman. I came across the shack in the mid-afternoon. It seemed to spring out of a slight depression in the unchanging flatness of plains, this isolated cabin with its miniature corral. And startling against the sun-browned earth, a tiny patch of green lawn. As I drew closer, I saw a child, perhaps three years old. She hugged a shapeless lump of calico in her arms and stood quiet in the doorway, watching gravely as I approached. I called hello to her. Her eyes remained on me, wide, gray-blue. The only reaction to my voice, a tightening of her hands about the faceless doll. I saw the window, a flap of canvas serving for glass, rough-hewn logs, ill-fitting, the chinks filled with baked earth. At the side of the cabin, a few yards away, was a well with its rope and an iron bucket. I looked back to the child, but she was no longer there. Instead, a tall, flaxen-haired woman stood in the doorway, a Winchester held in her hands. Jingle your spurs, mister. Go on. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you. I wondered if, if I could have some water. For the horse's well, I'd be willing to pay. You alone? Yes. We're not used to strangers riding this way. Where are you headed? Laramie. Well, that's a long ride. <laughs> I know. Your horse looks tired. You'd better water him. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, I got nothing for the horse to drink out of. You'll have to use your hat. It's all right. Ooh. Ooh. Use this. It's not much, but it's the biggest pan I've got. No, no, really. The horse doesn't mind my hat. He's used to it. Never mind. Poor. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's been a hot day. It's about the same as usual. I'm sorry about the rifle, mister. Yeah, it's all right. No, I'm sorry. My husband's away. He won't be back till late. He's just the baby and me. I understand. I guess it's easy to forget hospitality out here. I'm sorry that water's some brackish. Wally's digging a new well around the back, but it hasn't hit sweet water yet. I'm very grateful. Um, would you... Would you take this, please? Oh, no. We don't take money for water. You know, I wondered about your grass over there. It's pretty, isn't it? My sister sent the seeds from home, from the east. Connecticut. Uh -huh. That's where I'm from. Before Wally and I got married and came out here. Do you know Connecticut, mister? Yes, I've been there. You have? Where, Richfield? Do you know Richfield? No. Uh, New Haven, though. I've been there. Oh, that's fine. Just fine. Oh, imagine. New Haven. You must be one of those Yale college men. <laughs> no. The way you talk. No, I'm English. I could have sworn it was New England. Boston, maybe. How long have you been out here? A year now. We lived in St. Louis before that. The baby was born there and... <laughs> Listen to me chattering on. I... I guess it's just that we don't get much chance to talk to folks from the East. <laughs> I can understand. Can you? Can you? Well, I declare, we, we haven't even been introduced. I'm Meg Calder. J.B. Kendall. 
Mr. Kendall, why don't you come on in and have some apple cornbread? I just made some this morning. Oh, well, it's kind of you. It's pure selfish, that's what it is. I want to hear about New Haven and the like. You'd best put your horse in the corral. I'll make some coffee. Of course, it isn't like using fresh apples, real apples. But I guess we're lucky mm. to even get dried ones out here. Mm, really? Mm. Good, Mrs. Collins. Will you have some more coffee? Mm, please. Annie's taken quite a fancy to you. She usually hides and strangers are about. And she takes after you. Her eyes, hair. You think so? Annie. Anne Meredith, after my great aunt. Anne Meredith Honeycutt in Ridgefield. Ah. She's a little shy, Mr. Kendall. You see, she can't talk. Oh, well, she'll be... I mean, she never will. She was born with an affliction. But she can hear, and she understands some. She knows her name and Mama and Dada. Don't you, baby? Come on, sit on Mama's lap. <laughs> What brought you out here, Mrs. Calder? The land. We're homesteading. Wally knows a lot about farming. He figures when we get enough water, we'll raise wheat and grain. Barley, maybe. He says we've got to raise it to feed cattle. There'll be money in that. It must be hard work digging wells. Oh, it is. That one that's drying up, it's only 40 feet. The other one behind is down 50. Wally thinks maybe another 20 feet will get him water. Uh, he's gone to the Allen boys to borrow another spade. You mean he's digging it alone? Oh, yes. When we first set up here, a fellow came riding by, and he said he could locate water for us, and he surely did. Just used a forked stick, and he pointed right to the spot. He was a preacher kind of man. Helped Wally dig, and Wally paid him $5. Must get rather lonely for you. I mean, when your husband goes away. Mr. Kendall, I haven't seen a white woman for a year. I don't think there's one for a hundred miles around. Mrs. Manning used to live north, 30 miles from here, but she and her family... Oh, but Ed Manning, they got killed by Indians just before we came here. Don't do that, baby. Of course, we haven't had any trouble with Indians, but I do say I sometimes worry being alone with a baby. Well, I should imagine. I hope you don't mind. Mind? Me, talking on like a jaybird. Oh, I don't mind at all, no. Annie, where are you going? Annie! Oh, that child, I declare. It's Wally! Wally! Meg? Who's inside? Stranger came by, named Kendall, on his way to Larry. Mm. Didn't you get the trouble? No, no, there's trouble. Alan's place was burned down last night. Oh, wow. You better get Annie in. I don't want her outside. Come on, Annie. Come on, baby. Come on. Kendall? Yes, you're Calder. Well, pleased to know you, but you better be moving on. There's likely to be trouble. What is it? What happened? A fellow called Selfridge. Him and a bunch of cattlemen, they figured to run all the homesteaders out. But why? Well, they say we've been killing their range cattle. That's not true. I know it isn't. That's what Alan told them. They gave him and his brother a beating, then fired the place. Oh. Alan says they'll be heading this way. Oh, Wally. Mister, you better hit the trail. Oh, <laughs> If I can be of any help, I... Well, there's not much we can do. There's a bunch of... Them. No, I mean, if they come here, what's going to happen? I don't know. I guess I'll send the wife and kid over to old man Hovland's place, and I'll wait here. I'm not going. You've got a right to our land. It's all legal. You've got the papers, Wally. You can show them. Meg, papers don't matter. They want to get us out of the territory. This thing's been coming for a long time. Alan told me, all over the country, cattlemen trying to chase homesteaders out. They won't chase us. You've got to go up to Hovland's and take the kid, Meg. There might be shooting. Now you listen to me, Wally Calder. It took a year of wanting and all this spring for me to get that grass patch out front. I'm not giving it up. I'm here. Here I'm going to stay, and no cattleman nor anything else is putting me out. Can't you get protection from the law? Mister, the law is 130 miles from here, and they're not partial to homesteaders either. Well, in that case, it might be just as well if I stay here, just in case you need another gun. Well... <laughs> I'm obliged to you, Kendall, but if this Selfridge and his pals are looking for someone, it isn't going to be any healthier for you than for us. I'll take the chance with you, at least overnight. Hmm. Not much of a place to bed down. Meg can fix you up with a blanket. Well, sure I can. I've got a quilt, too. Not that you'll be needing it in this weather, Mr. Kendall. I'd best see to feeding the horse. Meg, you break out that hunting piece. There's shells back of the bureau top drawer. All right, Wally. 
I'll give you a hand, Mr. Calder. My name's Wally. And I'd be much obliged. I uh, haven't said anything to Meg, but I've been expecting something like this. Started up last winter, I guess. What happened? Oh, a lot of cattle died. It was a hard season. Well, you know how it is. Yeah. I came across a couple of poor critters myself, froze stiff, so I skinned them, took the hides. Wouldn't do the cattle any good. I sure needed them. So the cattlemen are saying fellas like me killed their beef, but they didn't die a natural death. Oh, watch out for the post. All right, I... It's loose. Yeah. Got to fix that one of these days. I think you're going to have visitors, Wally. Hmm? Must be them. Selfridge and his boys. How many can you see? Uh, three. No, uh, four. Yeah, four. Come on, we better get back to the cabin before they get here. In a moment, we return to Frontier Gentlemen. Here's a recipe to suit most anyone's taste. Tape a heaping portion of mystery, a full measure of suspense, fold in scientific detection and pulsating action, and heat to a burning climax. That's what we'll be serving up on CBS Radio's FBI in Peace and War every Sunday on most of these stations. And now we return you to the Anthony Ellis production of Frontier Gentlemen. <laughs> Meg Calder was waiting for us in the doorway when we reached the cabin. I noticed an ancient hunting rifle, as well as the Winchester, leaning against the wall. The child, Anne, was huddled in a corner, still clasping the calico doll in her arms. We watched the riders as they approached across the plain, and their gallop slowed to a canter, a walk, and then they stopped a few feet from the little grass patch. One of the horses began to nibble at the green shoots. Mister! Get that horse of yours off my grass. Now, Calder, I ain't gonna make a lot of talk. You got a kid inside. You got one hour to get her and your missus packed and out of here. You got it all wrong. We're staying. You get off my land. Homesteaders ain't wanted around here. Alan's already told me about that. You think you're gonna burn down my place? You got another thing coming. Now, me and the boys, we don't want no shooting. You don't get that horse of yours off my grass. There's going to be shooting right now. Meg, Meg, come back. Back him up now. Go on. I'm not telling you again. Now put up your gun, man. We ain't got no quarrel with women. No quarrel? What do you call it, then, to trying to throw us off of what's rightly ours? <laughs> yeah, man, she sure is a live dictionary, ain't she? Oh, come on, Jack. They ain't going peaceful. Let's get started. I wouldn't. Who are you? A friend of the Calders. Uh, another side buster, huh? <laughs> well, you better make a nine in your tail part. We don't want your kind around here. Now, I ain't got no personal quarrel with you, Calder, but this here country is for cattle. Fellers like you ain't gonna come in here killing our stock. I never did. Oh, come on, Selfridge. I don't want to stop around here all day wrangling with this home sucker. Let's start burning. You take it easy, Flag. We're going to give them an hour, like I said. I have an idea that's going to be the longest hour you ever waited, my friend. I ain't your friend, mister. I don't want no mavericker like you for a friend. One hour, Calder. Then we're coming back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One hour! <laughs> they don't seem to think you mean what you say. That's the trouble. Nobody puts up a fight against them. Well, they'll learn something from me. My great-grandfather, Silas Honeycutt, stood off a whole regiment of redcoats with Putnam. No offense to you, Mr. Kendall. You'll be an English and all. Mm, no offense. Uh, what do you think, Kendall? What are our chances? Wally Calder, you're not going Now, to... wait a minute, Meg. We've got to think about the kid. Not going to be much use if she's got no ma and pa to care for her. Those fellas mean business. We put up a fight, they'll be killing, maybe on our side. I'm not afraid. But there are other places to start up again. Wally, if you want to go, you go. I'm not stopping you. Me and Annie's staying. 
You do what you want. <laughs> She's some woman, you know, Kendall? I know. Uh, I asked, what do you think? Oh, I can't answer, Wally. It's up to you. Yeah. She sure takes good care of that grass, doesn't she? You know, we figure on finding vegetables as soon as we get the new well dug. No, she was inside. Well, she's gone. I can't find her. Hmm. Annie? Honey? Annie? 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 She isn't here, Wally. Did you look behind the stove? She likes to hide behind I looked! Well, perhaps she went out while we were all outside. Maybe she got frightened. Annie? Annie, Candle, baby? you go around the other side. Will you look in the corral? She Annie! likes the horse. Maybe she's what? there. For the next 15 minutes, we searched. I could see Selfridge and his men about a quarter of a mile away, watching us. I found no trace of the child. When I returned, I saw the Calder standing beside the mouth of the new well behind the cabin. I joined them and felt a cold chill as I looked down into the darkness at my feet. She, she couldn't have, honey. Well, maybe she did. Maybe she's down there. No, she knows about it. We showed her. We told her to stay away. Maybe she didn't understand. Maybe she was running, scared, and fell, and she's down there. No. And we can't hear her because she can't cry or shout or anything. And she's lying there, hurt or dead. No, Meg. <laughs> no, she's just hiding somewhere. We'll find her. <laughs> no. <laughs> Look, now, don't. It's your fault. It's you making us come out here in this terrible place with dirt, not enough food. Honey, we'll find her. She'll be all right. Now, take hold of yourself, Meg. They're back. It's selfish. I don't care. I want my baby. Wally, you've got to find her. Yeah. They noticed you ready to leave? The child is lost. Did you see her come out of the cabin? No. No, I didn't. Quint, you see her? Nope. Well, I guess maybe I did while we was talking. Where'd she go? Around you at her back. Wally! <laughs> you think she fell in the well? Well, we don't know. <clears throat> How deep is it? About 50 feet. Not there deep. Oh. You called to her down there? Well, it wouldn't do any good. She can hear, but she can't talk. That's a longish fall. I wouldn't figure it'd be alive. Shut no. your fool mouth, Well, flag. that's well, true. You, uh, Calder, you feet? sure she's down there? No, but she isn't anyplace else. Now, what's it like down there? Rock? No, no. Mostly soft dirt. You know, dirt. She, she could be all right, little kid like that. They can take a fall pretty good, you know. Now, that ain't much support, that soft dirt. Like's not you'd get a key in. He's aiming to fix that, but... Well, maybe she's not even in there. Get a rope, Wally. Somebody's got to go down to find out. Mm, not me, no, sir. I heard uh, about black damp in them wells. No, sir. Black, I ain't ready to sack my sack. Up now. Well, I ain't going Here. down there. I haven't got a proper windlass. Out, Just been tying the other end of the post there. Good. She holds good. Now, you fellas pay it out. Sure. I'm going down. Right. Wally. Hard block. You be careful. Oh, get behind me. Yeah, flag, yeah. get behind him. Oh, flag. Hold tightly now. Oh. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Let yeah. it be out slow. You got the flag? Yeah. Go ahead. Easy now, darling. Mm. Easy. Slowly. Oh. Slowly. Yeah, There's a lot of loose dirt falling. Stand clear to edge. Slowly oh. now. Oh. Wally, shout out when you're on the bottom. Oh. Yeah. Annie. All right. Watch out. You've got Annie. a hand caught in that hitch. Oh, oh, yeah. Stay on right now. Yeah, go ahead. He's down. He's down. Right, yeah. Wally? Is she all right? Wally? I don't know. Bring her up, Wally. Hmm. Tie, the, tie the rope under your arms. Hold her. We'll pull you up. Yeah. All right. Some slack. Wait. Oh. Let us know when you're ready. Lord, please. Please. Oh, Lord, deliver us, I pray. Oh, now, Mrs. Lord. She's going to be all right. Now, you see, she's going to be just fine. 
Sure take in a sweet time. You ready? Wally, are you ready? What's the matter with him? Calder, do you want us to pull up? Huh? It's gone slack again. It's a black dance guy, and that's what did you keel over. Wally, here. can you hear me? I'm going down after them. Be ready to pull up fast when I give the word. I went down into the well as quickly as I dared, my feet unavoidably scuffing the walls of the shaft, sending showers of dirt to the bottom. As the circle of light diminished over my head, I became aware of a stale heaviness in the air which became more pronounced with every foot of the descent. Then I was at the bottom, and I could dimly make out the form of the child, and huddled beside her, Wally. As I made a hurried loop of the rope under my arms, I began to feel light-headed. It was an effort to pick up the child, to hold her. Pick me up! Up! Then, as the ascent began, and the air became fresher, I felt my senses returning, and with them the realization that the little girl's heart was still beating. Is she all right? Annie. Annie. She's alive. She's alive. Take her. All right. Now you come on out. I'll go down for call. No, no time. Send me down. Hurry. You'll have to bring us up together. I knew now what was meant by black damp. Some form of gas which gathered in the bottom of the well. This time I breathed as sparingly as possible. At the bottom I put Wally Calder over my shoulder and then began the never-ending journey to the surface. The light above me became dimmer and dimmer. I felt Wally falling, slipping off my shoulder, my grip on the rope weakening, weakening. Mr. Kendall? Mr. Kendall? Mr. Kendall? Kendall? Oh, there. That's better. Oh, I... Oh, how did I... They pulled us out, Kendall. Oh, huh? I don't remember. They said you had a grip on me like to twist my neck off. Oh, I'd, I'd like to thank them. I already did. They didn't feel like waiting. Oh? No, they just kind of stood around a couple of minutes and figured they'd better get back to the ranch before night. How's the little girl? Some bruises, but that's all. Oh. She's asleep now. Oh. We... Meg and me... We just wish there was something we could do. If you want, you can share our place with us till you find a likely site for yourself. I'll help you build, Kendall. I'll give you a year's work for what you've done for us. Oh, well, thank you. But I suppose I'm what you'd call a wandering man. I'll stay the night, if I may. Then in the morning, I'll go on to Laramie. And after Laramie? <laughs> I don't know, Mrs. Calder. I don't really know. Frontier Gentlemen was written, produced, and directed by Anthony Ellis and stars John Daner as J.B. Kendall. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Vic Perrin, Larry Dobkin, Jack Crucian, and Harry Bartell. Dan Coverley speaking. <laughs>